Aloha, top of the morning friends and family. If you watched last Wednesday's uncut video, you know that I talked about Tom Harbin a little bit. For those of you that knew Tom, those of you that know Tom, uh, you know what a great guy he is and what a sore spot, what a, what a loss it is to our hobby to have a guy like that gone from Earth. So um, I said in that video on Wednesday that I would be putting together a compilation of clips that I have of Tom, fortunately, and there's clips of Tom being awesome, which basically means I point the camera at Tom and he's Tom, and that's awesome. Um, fortunate to have these clips so I could share. Um, before I show those clips, I just wanted to read. I got messages from his sons um, that I was, that I have been permitted to share, and so I just want to read those messages real quick for you guys before we get into the clips of Tom. Hey Brian, I'm Tom's youngest son, Ben. Thank you for loving my dad in the reptile world. My family went to shows with him and mom periodically and I've seen you from a distance. It's hard. It's been the darkest few days of my life. However, this has also been in a weird way, the most inspiring few days of my life. Seeing videos, reading stories, pictures, all these memories that I've relived in the past four days, it's no secret who my dad lived for every day. He loves Jesus and he wanted to tell everyone he knew. Thank you for the video and your words of encouragement. It means more than you know. Thank you for loving my dad and I'm thankful you had the chance to record videos of him so we can have to have them to look back at one day. Hopefully one day soon at a show I'll be able to shake your hand in person and tell you thanks, Ben. Thanks for the message, Ben. Thanks for letting me share it. And also, speaking of shows, if you guys are going to be today as this video is going out at the Pacific Northwest Reptile Show. I will be there, so if you want to meet up and shake hands, um, please do. I'll be there all weekend, so. Um, and then message from Josh at Herpin Harbins. Go follow him over on YouTube here, Herpin Harbins Josh. I'll put the link down in the description. Um, Brian, thank you for sharing your experiences with my father. He had nothing but nice things to say about you and enjoyed your company. I never knew my dad was your first sale what a great connection story. Yeah, dude, seriously. That was, anyway, I talked about that in the uncut video. Um, Dad was passionate about his reptiles, but he was even more passionate about helping and loving those around him. Ain't that the truth? Uh, he, he had a natural gift of connecting with people. However, he also constantly sharpened those skills. He read countless books about being a better husband, father, veterinarian, mentor, woodworker, the list goes on. But above all other books, he studied the Bible the most. He had notebooks all over the house with scriptures, reptile notes, and project lists. As Alicia and I are taking over care of his collection, we found notes about scripture all throughout his reptile notes. I wish we still had dad with us, but we know he's smiling. But we know he's smiling and looking down on us from heaven. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Tom Harbin. This is the uh, Monarch Project. This is actually a Monarch pastel female that I hatched out last year. A simple recessive gene that came basically just out of nowhere. Rance Meyer bought a pair of pastels and it showed up. And so we've done a, I think I had a lot of fun with hatching this out and taking it to the next level. Last year, if you've seen any of my other videos, I hatched out a uh, Monarch genetic stripe clown, a triple recessive. So that was really an honor for me to do that. So we're still working with this thing. We're trying to get it in pies. We're trying to do some other thing with it, but very special morph here. I saw a guy over here that I really want to say hi to. Here we go, here we go. Uh-huh. Which I would not keep for me. Yeah. Uh, hey, <laughs> hi Brian, good to What's see that? you. Me too. Good to see you, Brian. Me too, bro. You're already, you're already filming. No, right? I, I would never film. That's, <laughs> not, that's not. not my stuff. Of course not. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad to see you. Yeah, I'm glad to see you too, dude. Ladies and gentlemen, Tom Harbin, one of the nicest people you could ever hope to run into at a reptile show. Hey guys, 100%. come on down. If you gotta get on the plane, come on down. You're missing the greatest thing in the world. I just got into hog news as last year, starting with his. Nice. So yeah, now I got 18. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Don't take long. Don't take long. <laughs> <laughs> it had him in a year. Oh yeah, really pretty. I like that she, markings. Look at the markings. Those little yes. lines across, I love her. And she's she's just one gene away from being a solar flare. Mm -hmm. Wow. Oh my gosh. Sometimes people wow. post those and people say, ah, you're photoshopping your snakes. I say, well, you can. No, not his. He can kiss my <laughs> rear end. <you> know? <laughs> Seriously, one of the most humble and, and wonderful gentlemen you could ever know in this hobby, in my opinion. Um, 
right up there with Brian Gundy, I would say. I was just thinking, where's Tom? Hi, man. <laughs> What's up? Is it one? No, it's not time yet. No. Tom Harbin, ladies and gentlemen. Couldn't meet, really meet a better guy in the reptile world, honestly. I'm glad to finally get you on one of these things. I know I've come by, stopped by the booth and like, can you hear me okay in those? I, like, you're fine, 100%, cool. yeah. Um, I've come by the booth and done a couple quick features, but right. I've been wanting to have right. you sit down and actually do one of these, like, and finally it's happening. Well, thank you. Because you, you. you gave me, a, uh, I don't know if you know that you gave me a big uh, jump start in feeling successful in what I was trying to do when I first, it was actually my second clutch. You got one of the animals out of it. Yes. It, it was actually Ben Fugger who reached out to me and said I, that my, my buddy Tom okay. is, is yeah. looking to maybe get a snake from Triple B. And he checked, you checked with him first to see if he knew me. And luckily, me and Ben have been talking a little bit. And he right, said, right. I remember he sent me messages like, he's like, can I trust you? Oh, no. No. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to recommend Tom for you. And if you mess, well, he didn't say it just like that. But, but he did ask if he could trust me. That but was it, the message. Yeah. Because <laughs> uh, like, I don't, I don't want to send Tom down to somewhere where. Okay. And I, I really appreciated you picking up that animal, man. Because it, it made me, it gave me a good good feeling about where I was trying to go right. with producing animals and being able to sell them. And when it was you that actually wanted to purchase one of my animals, I, I felt it made me feel proud. Okay. Well, I'm happy. Yeah, man. I'm, I'm proud of that too. Yeah. Yeah. Because you're, you're a vet. Right? Yeah, I'm a veterinarian. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. yeah. You have been for a long time. Right? Uh, 40 years. Yeah, that's quite a while. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've had a day or two. So do you, do you work with snakes at the office or is it? We do. It's, it's not our primary thing, but uh, since I'm a keeper and a breeder and you know, I get a lot of reptile stuff, but if I had to depend on it, I couldn't do it for a living. So, um, but we probably 1% of our practice, which is not a lot, but I see a couple a week, you know. The ones that, whatever's in your area that has, yeah. they know, kind yeah. of know to come yeah. to you. And, and we're in a small um, area right now. We're in Montgomery, Alabama. It's a big town, but there's not a lot of uh, reptile activity there. Sure. Sure. So, well, I, I, uh, I'm sure the, the few people that do keep out there are pretty glad they could have somebody yeah, like you to come yeah. to, to. Well, you know, a lot of my old people still drive four hours to see me with their reptiles. So Wow. So, you know, that makes me feel good. Yeah, it's awesome. And I can still help. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and you've been doing this show since the beginning, basically. It goes way back, and I have forgotten, but pretty much the beginning. Yeah, yeah. We go back eight or ten years before they added the March show, I know for sure. So, and then I picked up Arlington two years ago, so I guess I'm part of the family. <laughs> nice. <laughs> have, have you been working with uh, ball pythons specifically in your reptile keeping? I got my first morph ball python in 03 when it was still sort of at the frenzy level. And uh, so we bought in big. And uh, But before that, I was doing colubrids for 30 years. And I guess I started breeding snakes in the mid-80s, 85, 86, you know, and hatching my own stuff. And uh but then it's just evolved into everything else. Now it's the Western hogs and the balls and, you know, a few corns and a few boas just so I can, you know, not get bored. Cool. So, yeah, yeah. Well, if we could, we got a few animals here that you produced that we could take a look, quick look at. It would be a... Uh... Absolutely, absolutely. So Monarch is obviously your, your baby. Monarch is my baby. I was Rance Meyer's first customer. And uh, he's the one who found the Monarch gene. I think most people know that story. Bought a pair of pastels from somebody, from somebody, from somebody, and hatched out G-stripes and Monarchs in the first clutch. And so that was the beginning. And then I bought my first animal from Rance, and I pretty much carried the torch. Rance is out of it now. He's sold out. So uh, so it's my, it's my baby now. So, yeah. And it, I've heard you talk about it on videos before, and I know myself, but for everybody that's, that's watching that maybe hasn't seen it, it's, it's kind of like Ultramel in a way. I mean, it is recessive as well, too, right? It is, it is simple. So it's so, much like Ultramel, but, Ultramel, but much darker. Much more contrast. Much more contrast. Much darker. They keep that contrast no matter what combo that I've put them on so far. And, uh, you know, the Ultramels are great morph. Looking at right it in now. person here, it's it's almost kind of a seems like it's a disservice to, to compare it to Ultramel because it's obviously yeah. much higher contrast, much darker. Yeah, it, it does not look Ultramel at all. Now this is a pastel. I did not bring the single gene. Uh, this one's also carrying the genetic stripe, which doesn't show up. But this is sort of what you start off with is the basic morph Monarch. If you want pastel, you go this. So anyway, we've made the pastel on top of the G stripe uh, Monarch. We've made the super pastel. Um, the thing that happened for me two years ago. I saw that. I know yeah, what you're going to say. You know, three years before that, I made my own triple heads, clown, genetic stripe, monarch. Um, ended up with five eggs. 
One egg died along the way, so I had four eggs. They hatched, uh, three males, one female. So I'm thinking, oh crap, you know, how's this gonna go? So anyway, I finally bred two years ago, uh, the triples to the triples, ended up with the triple, the genetic stripe, monarch clown, which is an awesome snake. I don't have it with me because she's getting ready to breed. She, wow. She's there. Nice. And uh, then I also made a uh, genetic stripe clown and a clown, all of those possible head for everything else. So that really jump-started the, this project. When I did the triple, that caught a lot of attention. Yes, and, it did. Uh, so, but, you know, that, that's, that's fun for me. And uh, I'm thinking, you know, how can that happen to a guy like me, you know? But anyway, you're in this for the long game. You can't jump in, go buy a few snakes, and start breeding. And, you know, but anyway, so uh, I've been at this for six, seven years on the Monarchs. It's starting to pay off, you know, and starting to do some cool things. Uh, working on the pods, uh, pod monarchs, that's coming. That'll be cool to see. Yeah, that's coming. Um, I've got two more projects that, if my monarch family is listening to me, real soon there's going to be leopard cryptic monarchs. Ooh. So, yeah, I can't wait to see that yeah. one. Yeah. So it's coming. It's coming. Uh, maybe not too far off. So, anyway, um, monarch still got a lot of feet under it. A lot of miles to go. Yeah. So anyway, yeah. yeah. It's a, looks and from what I've seen, the adults don't change much from babies. They really don't. I mean, this thing is bright right now. The female, the adult female, they've got two that look just like this. They just stay bright. They don't fade like pastels do. The monarch holds color. If you see orange on babies, you're going to see orange as adults, which is you know not common. Not as common as python. that's true. Yeah. yeah. So um, the contrast is still there, and. Uh, so you, you can, with assurance, tell people, hey, this is what you're going to get. Three years from now, it'll be the same thing. So yeah. And not everything does that. So, True. So I like that. Yeah, me too. So hang in there for Monarchs. We've got a lot of surprise coming. We, we've got a, probably a couple of dozen people in the United States that have Monarch genetics now. And so they're going to be doing stuff that I'm not doing. So we're going to see a lot of cool stuff. Yeah, man. Yeah. yeah. A lot of cool stuff. Awesome. Yeah. What I else we got hiding down here? You know, um, Clown has sort of been one of my favorite things. And... I finally narrowed myself down to three projects, and clowns is one of them. And everybody loves clowns. Um, but this, why, why do you think this? Why do you think everybody loves? Because I love cl clown is my favorite right. morph as well. What right. is it? I mean, obviously it creates really cool snakes, which it is does. probably the reason it, it does. does. Like, but what? what I've not it? figured that out. I, I think the name clown it, it sort of draws you in. You know, yeah. clown really. Well, not, why do you call it a clown? Not too serious. <laughs> yeah, not too serious. Yeah, it's kind of fun. So, um, but there's a lot of genes that really do stuff to clowns that doesn't do it to any other any other you know morphs so you get a lot of trick you know looking stuff you get a lot of fading you get a lot of i don't you know just uh blending so just like this guy this is a six gene animal here whoa yeah that's it's, more than i would have guessed it's a mojave orange dream inchy leopard pastel and clown so it's all here and uh so i, I love this thing Love this thing. Oh, I almost would have guessed there was coral glow in there somewhere. Oh wait, you did say the you banana. did say banana. The, okay, did I, you did. did I leave that banana? Okay, mm, maybe not. Maybe I think, not. I think I left that. It is banana. Yes, okay. it is. Yeah. Um, so anyway, this is the best thing that I've ever done. So, you know, and she's on my table for sale for a price. You know, uh, and she's not your fifteen hundred dollar clown. She. She. <laughs> yeah. She. She. <laughs> so. Um, yeah, she's she's going to replace her mother, which is an uh, inchy banana pet clown. So, uh, you know, not that she's leaving, but this is going to be her uh, her come along. So one of the other things that I'm strong in is the dream sickles. And when I saw Ralph Davis's first dream sickles, I think everybody in the country said, holy cow. You know, they might have said other things, too. <laughs> you know, so... Uh, so dream sickles are big for me, and, and I'm, I'm working on combos there, black pastel dream sickles, you know, and Kobelko's done a lot of stuff with that too, a lot of stuff that I haven't even tried to do. But then with my dream sickles this year, I hatched out this this girl. So uh, I don't even know what really to call her, but she's got pod, awesome. pod patterns. Oh, yeah. She's banana. She is 100% het lavender, and then she's got a big ringer or a double ringer there. Look at that thing, man. So isn't that awesome? So uh, she's actually on my table, too, for sale, but for a, a hefty price. So uh, I'd love to just keep her in my rack, you know? Yeah, that's, uh, that's kind of how you put your 
everything maybe has a price right but it it's does. just like some it of it's does. just too high like you price the thing like, if somebody really wants it more than me then they're gonna have yeah, to prove it absolutely absolutely <laughs> just give me visitation rights you know? so, uh, anyway so this is sort of going to be maybe the flagship for my dream circle stuff you know say so, hey of course we know paradoxing is not reproducible sure. genetically but but still doesn't make, make it any less cool doesn't make it any less cool right so I do this, and then I also do the highway stuff, and uh, do a lot of cool stuff with the highway stuff. But I didn't bring any of that with me today. But uh, cool, man. So it's a lot of fun. A lot awesome, of fun. Tom. Yeah, man. So. You're, you're a good guy to sit down and talk to, man. You got such a nice, you got such a nice, warm, wholesome vibe, man. You, you feel good. All right, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks for coming down, and sitting with us. Hey, man. I love it. Thank I you for taking the time that. for me. Yeah, it's an man. honor. Thank you, Brian. Yes, sir. Thanks. Ooh, another fantastic person to come see the show. If you come to a show and you happen upon. This man right here. Hey man, Sorry, hey I don't mean man. to catch you off guard, but I'm just gonna. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. I'm doing. I'm doing a raw and cut video. So uh, you caught me working here. <laughs> That's rare. Tom. Tom not only produces fantastic snakes, but he's a fantastic human being. Somebody definitely. If you're at a show, come talk to Tom. You will not regret your decision to do so. Whether you're just interested in snakes or just interested in meeting a really cool person. Tom, thank you for giving us such a great person to look up to and emulate in this hobby. You will be missed here on Earth until we meet again.